Hello everyone and welcome to the next video podcast for GCSE P Edexcel. In today's session we're going to be looking at component one, fitness and body systems, and we're going to be looking specifically at the musculoskeletal system. This podcast is part one of two, where, and today we're going to look specifically at the skeletal system. In the next podcast, you'll be looking at the muscular system, and for your exam, it's important that you know how the two systems work together. We're going to be looking at the main functions of the skeletal system. We're going to be looking at the names and the different types of bones, and what connective tissue is. And finally, we're going to look at the different types of movement associated with the skeletal system. As always, make sure you've got your notes at your side. Anything that's underlined, make a note of it. And feel free to pause and rewind the video as you're watching. So the first thing you need to know for the skeletal system is the main functions. There are five main functions associated with the skeletal system. The first main function is blood cell production. Inside all, inside your bones, you have what we call a bone marrow. And that's where blood is made. Your skeletal system is also important in allowing your muscles to attach. And they are attached by what we call connective tissue, which we'll look at in a moment. Because of this attachment, it allows your muscles to move your skeleton and help produce movement. As you can see in this picture here, you've got the muscles attached to the bones. Another key function of your skeletal system is mineral storage. Your skeletal system stores things like calcium, which helps your bones get strong and for healthy teeth, phosphorus, uh, and as well as other different minerals that you need to know. Your skeletal system also has joints, for example, the elbow joint, the knee joint, the shoulder joint, and these joints allow your skeletal system to move. Without those joints, movement wouldn't be possible. And the final function is protection. An example of protection is your cranium. It's a really hard part of your skeletal system and it protects your um, brain. Your rib cage is also another important part of your skeletal system and it helps protect things like the lungs and the hearts. Some people might think the skeletal system is your armour to protect against injury or damage to your vital organs. An easy way to remember these different functions is bones make moving joints possible. Make a note to this in your notes, so it makes it easier to remember in your exam. You also need to know the names of the different types of bones in the body. Now, there's a lot of bones here, and one of the easiest ways to help you remember these is just by constantly looking at them, quickly covering them up, trying to remember, and name the different bones. You'll need to know the names of these bones, because in your exam, you might get asked a question associated to a certain bone in the body. So it's important that you know how the femur helps us to kick a ball in football or the radius and ulna and humerus and scapula allow us to throw a ball and how maybe the cranium helps to protect our brain against certain head injuries. You also need to know what different types these bones are and you can use this key at the bottom here to help you and they're colour coded. The first type of bone you need to know about are long bones. They're longer than they are wide, just like the femur here. So nice and long and not very wide. And they generally help us to move about or provide levers for movement. For example, like before when I said about kicking a ball. You also have short bones in your body. And these are box-like shapes. And these bones here, your carpals, act as short bones. And you've also got some here, and um, your tarsals. And they just help to bear weight. So, for example, if you were doing a handstand, they help to bear the weight of your body on your wrist. Or if you're standing upright, the tarsals help to bear the weight of the rest of the body. You also have flat bones, and these are thin, and they're a little bit like plates. For example, your sternum, which is in this area here, that's a flat bone. And they allow for protection but also allow lots of muscles to attach to your um, skeleton. And the final type of bone are what we call irregular bones, and they're generally unusual shapes, a little bit like your vertebrae, which are these orange ones here, and they allow for um, protection, so your central nervous system runs through there and helps to protect it, but also for lots of muscle attachment, 
for your muscles to attach to things like that. So make sure you know the names of the different bones and also know what type of bone they are. And think to yourself how they, they are used in sport. Now, as well as different types of bones, there are different types of joints. You need to know about these four main types of joint. So, for example, you have a pivot joint, of which the vertebrae are a pivot joint, and it helps you to pivot your neck and your cranium so it can turn left and right, and they sort of slide across each other and pivot around the central axis. They allow for things like rotation. You also have hinge joints, of which your knee and your elbow are hinge joints, and they're just like a hinge on a door, and they allow for flexion and extension. So, for example, if you were um, kicking a ball, your knee would flex and extend in kicking a ball. Same with if you were jabbing in boxing, your elbow would flex and extend. you then got condyloid joints, which are small joints here. For example, um, between your radius and your ulna and your calf holes. And they slide across each other and they allow your um, bones to circumduct and to move around. And then a the final joint are ball and socket joints. And they look exactly like this. The end of your bone is similar to a ball and they slot into a dome-like shape. And we have these in our shoulder joint and our hip joint with our pelvises. And these allow for rotation. So make sure you know the different types of joints. You know examples of them in the body. And also you know the types of movements that are allowed with these types of joints. And I'm going to talk to you now about um, how your muscles and bones are connected together. They're connected by what we call connective tissue. And we have a, the knee joint here. So when a muscle is connected to a bone, we have what we call a tendon that connects the two together. But sometimes we have bones that are connected to other bones and we call these ligaments. So make sure you know the difference between those two types of connective tissue and these are found in all of your joints around your body where there's joints, bones and muscles associated. This is the knee and the elbow is another very common example too. So I talked to you earlier on about the different types of movements. These are four of the main types of movements that you need to know. We've got flexion, which is um, decreasing the angle of a joint. So you can see in this example, he's pulling his arm towards his body and decreasing this angle. And extension, which is increasing the angle of a joint. And you can see this angle here at his elbow has increased an example of this might be in football so for example um, you can see here the leg is extended then it begins to be flexed at the knee joint he's flexing that muscle now now when he kicks the ball his leg is fully extended and you can see the angle of the joint is changing in the two in the middle the angle is flexed and shortened and the two on the end he's extended his leg and increased the angle joint Two other types of movement specifically for the ankle area are dorsiflexion, is where obviously the foot raises upwards and decreases the angle at the ankle, and plantar flexion is where you open your foot, point it downwards, and open the angle. And you can see in this example here, the gymnast has plantar flexed their ankle joint. And the final type of movement are abduction and adduction. And abduction is when you move a body part away from the body. And an easy way to remember that is if aliens were to abduct you, they would take you away. And then we've got adduction is where you move um, body parts towards the center line of the body. And again, an easy way to remember that is we're adding to the center line of the body, adduction. In the example here, the goalkeeper has reached above his body moved his arms away from his body to grab the ball, showing good abduction. Then we also have rotation, and this is a twisting action where a part of the body twists around. So, for example, if you were doing a somersault as a gymnast, you'd rotate your whole body. And then we have circumduction. It's a combination of flexion, ad adduction, and abduction, and extension. And it looks like you're drawing a circle in the air. So the example in this picture here, um, the shoulders are adducting, and they're circumducting around the joint to help him to perform the swimming action so make sure you don't get those two mixed up this is about a whole body and this is a combination of flexion abduction adduction and extension together like the swimmer 
So in summary, we've looked today at the different functions of the skeletal system. We've looked at the different types of movement that the skeletal system allows us to do. And we looked at the different types of bones, as well as the different names of bones and what connective tissue is. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure you go back and make any additional notes or go back uh, for anything that you've misunderstood. And look out for part two of this video podcast, which is going to be looking at the muscular system as part of the musculoskeletal system. Thank you.